In this tutorial we're going to show you how to create an engineering drawing, sometimes called detailing, um, of the cube. Uh, we're using a single component because this one demonstrates much better the way in which you can bring dimensions from the model into the, uh, into the drawing to automate more of the process. So we start off with the component, in this case the corner cube open on screen, and we go to the file menu, start a new file, and we're going to call this one cube corner. Remember, no spaces in file names. We're going to change the, for the type of the, draw the uh, file to a drawing file. Leave the template selected and click OK. We get a second menu, which then asks us to choose the size of our drawing. We're going to use an A3 drawing. And again, use the template to set out how the drawing will first appear. When you click OK, the drawing will appear in a window. and you'll notice that we've got three views the orthogonal views front elevation, side elevation and plan plus an isometric the scale of the drawing will have been created automatically and we can see that down at the bottom of the page here in very small text at the moment it's one to one, it's full size to better see what's going on we want to change the scale so we double click on the scale and if we put in two it'll now do it twice full size. Notice all of the views have changed accordingly because at the moment they follow the scale of the drawing. Uh, we may want to move these views and at the moment they're locked in position so if we select this view and I've chosen this one because it's the um, initial view from which these other two have been projected and you'll see why in a moment. So I've selected it and you'll notice the outline of the view has turned red I right click and then alter, uh, unlock the view movement. This allows me to move this view and you'll notice that as I move it the other two projected views have to say stay in orthogonal alignment. So once we've positioned the view where we want it we, we've got the option then of right clicking and locking it in position to stop it moving again. So now that we've done the uh, positioning, we may want to change the way these views are represented. So I'm going to choose this um, plan. If I've selected it, I right click and open the properties window. The properties window allows us to change a great many things uh, on the view. We're going to look at the way in which that view is displayed. So I've chosen the option in this left hand column and at the moment there's no hidden lines being shown. So we'll change that to show hidden lines and this at the moment the solid is showing the intersection between the radiuses, the, the rounds on the corners and the flat surfaces. We don't want to see that so we're going to change that to none and apply that to see what effect it has. And You'll notice that the edges that join the rounds have gone and we can now see the holes that run through in each of the two axes. So we're happy with that, we can close that down and you can change those properties for any of these views independently. Now, the isometric view is taking up quite a bit of room at the moment, so we may want a different scale for this. So I've selected it, I right click, um, change its properties, and one of the, the uh, options on the left hand side is the scale. So we'll put this one back to a custom scale of um, 0.5, apply that, and you'll see that uh, it's now gone back to its original size. In fact, we'll change it back to 1. There we are. want it full size. And when I close that, you'll notice that there is now an annotation underneath that tells you that this is a different scale to the scale of the entire drawing. Now, that annotation isn't quite in the right place, so we want to move that. And at the moment, I can't select it. And that's because within Creo Elements Pro, the drawing, you have tabs across the top of the screen which allow you to do certain functions and the annotations, the text notes, you have to have the annotation tab selected. That will now allow me to select the text and then drag it into position. So you must have the correct tab active in order to carry out certain functions with the annotation tab highlighted. I can't now 
change the properties of these views I have to go back to the layout tab to change the properties. So we want the annotations tab because now we're going to add some uh, dimensions. So we'll choose a view, I'm going to use this um, front elevation and we want to add the dimensions and it's best to do this by taking the dimensions from the 3D model that we use to create the, the solid in the first place. And that way if anything changes in the model then the drawing will change automatically. It has the added advantage you can change dimensions here in the drawing and that will generate a change in the model itself. So we do that by making sure the annotation tab is active. Click on show model annotations and we get a window here that allows us to choose which of the dimensions we want to display. So they're all visible as red text. As soon as we click on one of these it'll show that that's now going to appear. For a simple model like this we can show all of the dimensions and then clean them up later. So I've selected this button all the dimensions will remain on the view when we close this window. So apply that, cancel the window, and we've now got all of those dimensions on here. Each of the dimensions can be moved while you've got the annotation tab highlighted. So we can position some of these where we might want them. And what I want to do now is alter the way in which this dimension is shown. It's not conventional to show it here, but no hidden detail. So I really want that dimension over here on this view. So we select it, right click, just make sure it's selected, right click and then move item to view. Select the view you want it, move it to and there it's moved across here. So we might also want this dimension down here moved to the plan. and you can carry on tidying up dimensions like that. Occasionally you'll find a dimension here, which is an offset of this hole. We don't want that, so once it's highlighted, press delete on the keyboard and we can remove it. Move that one down slightly. That's the chamfer distance. You may actually want that on this top view here. And there's a little more space. There we are. If we want to move back to fitting that into the viewport, it just remains now for us to um, add a note. So I'm going to zoom in on the title block here, and we're going to put a note in here with the name of the of the object. Notice here, there's an automation gone on where it's picked up the um, name of the part and put it in automatically from the file name. So if we want to add an annotation, we use this button here called Note. It's offering us a number of options. So we're going to create one with no leader. And it's going to be horizontal, a standard text, and default settings. So we'll make a note. Uh, we now need to click where we want the note to appear. And I'm going to type in Construction. I want a new line now, I want a two line note, so I'm going to click the green check mark once, type in the second line, click the green check mark again, it thinks we want a third line, we don't, so if we click the green check mark again, it completes the note. We can close that down, and then we can drag that into position. So that's a very brief introduction to engineering drawing or detailing. A lot more information is available through PTC University's Precision LMS, which is available free to all teachers trained to use the software uh, teaching in high schools.